episode four, a nasty work podcast. He's your that. host, Nate Russell, the illustrious Luke Frazier. I can't say my own name. No. And Luke <laughs> Frazier. <laughs> Can you take that <laughs> fucking visor off? Why can't I wear the visor? Okay. I'm trying reflects, to get on. My, it reflects poorly on me. I'm trying to get on my well, Drewski I'm, I'm, shit. I just want to let the record state that I asked Nate to take it off. He asked me to take it off. He's trying to stifle me. Uh, fucking three, four months after Black History Month, stifling my character is insane. That is crazy, dude. I don't know why I can't just wear this sweet visor, swanky. <laughs> you know, I'm not even gonna get into this with you. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to go to the white party with Drewski, bro. This is okay, how you get this in. This is what we want to talk about. This right. is how you get in, dude. Upside right. down visors. All right, let's talk about it. Let's okay. get into it. All right. Adrenochrome Central, first of all. Uh, adrenochrome, like the shit that gets released when you're scared? No, that's adrenaline. Adrenochrome is, it's, I'm pretty sure, I need the fact checkers to check this, but they basically take dead, like they basically kill children and suck their adrenaline glands and the like, forest their adrenaline glands. And that's how famous people stay healthy and look so young. And when you get into, when you get super famous and they have the dead eyes, like everyone at that fucking white party did, it's because of the adrenochrome. Where do, is this a TikTok thing? No, it's, it's a fact. It, 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 first of all, we cannot just start saying that that is a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> that is not just a factual thing that is just people don't want to talk about it, but it's true all right all right give me a little bit give me you have to give me something on this i just gave you, you everything all right so they it helps them stay young where do they get the, where are they sourcing the kids just anywhere i don't know i think that's where you start getting into the weeds of the conspiracy theories like on some wayfair shit i think they're <laughs> sourcing the children from abroad is the uh consensus uh oh that's so sad yeah that's so but, sad um, so when you get super famous, like it's like adrenochrome shit. And that's why everyone looks like they got dead eyes and they're all wearing sunglasses and shit. Okay. I mean, does it have any other benefits besides just like keeping you young? I does think you it... get a Richard Millie too. Oh, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think those things are pretty, pretty inextricably tied together. Okay. Who without a doubt, just so after this podcast, I can go and actually look at this person. Who do you think definitely is on adrenochrome? Michael though? Rubin for sure. Oh. Um, I would say Regis was. Uh huh. Um, but he died like an, at a normal age. <laughs> yeah, but he looked insane until the day that he did die. I just thought he had bad plastic '80s plastic surgery, like bad '80s plastic surgery. Uh, that could also be part of it. Because he like you ever like see someone that well, like the thing? Which, no, here's what you have to realize: is adrenochrome technology wasn't adv advanced in the '80s that it is today. Uh okay okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> Adrenochrome technology. Adrenochrome. Yeah. Adrenochrome technology. You're at, you're talking like you're a biotech salesman, dude. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> my, my yo. So my dad, when we were growing up, um, we you know because like that was like during big like you know my dad wasn't a psychiatrist, so we couldn't prescribe medicine. Mm -hmm. But that was big like oxycotton era, you know. Mm -hmm. So we had like all this like like Xanax, Oxycontin, Viagra swag in the house because they would just give it to my pops like because they would give it out to all the shrinks, you know. Ooh, did you guys have um, the Percocet clock? No, I had a Viagra clock in my room growing up, though. That's yeah, it was so sick. fucking And sick. we had, like, you know, like, Percocet, like, notepads or, like, you know, like, <laughs> like uh, Laura Prof or whatever. What's the... Uh, La lo lo I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. Like, the antidepressant and shit. Uh-huh. Um, so, I gotta ask... I know. <laughs> He came in with the church shoes on. <laughs> and no socks. And no socks. I know, I know them church shoes are smelling <laughs> crazy right now. You guys can't see it, but our our podcast, our junior producer, Mark, is wearing church Balenciaga church shoes, no socks with little slave feet. <laughs> I was hoping you were gonna say that, because I can't say that, but that's exactly <laughs> all right, all right. So Holy wait, shit. I want to I want to tap more into the into this secret society. I'm assuming you're wrapping this into a secret society Illuminati. situation. Yeah, it's Illuminati shit. Illuminati. Yeah. Are you a firm believer of the the Illuminati lore? I think it's coming back into into vogue. Are you. I'm fascinated by this because I'm. This is the first I'm hearing a lot of this. No, we're gonna put it on the trend report. Honestly, <laughs> I think Illuminati's uh, on trend for the um. For the second half of 24. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, you might be right about that. Okay. All but right. yeah, I'm, I'm a big firm believer in the Illuminati. They were probably doing some recruiting at the Rick Ross car show. That's good recruiting, you think? I think for if they're looking for like, you know, like dudes with them big dreads. 
Those are the guys that are in the Illuminati. No, but for some reason, and I don't like, I actually like to talk. <laughs> like, like, let's just take a step back and just like think about like who we think is in the. You think that I Beyonce think Plies is in the Illuminati? You think Plies. <laughs> Yeah, uh, for some reason, got, Florida dude, rappers are really big with the Illuminati. I don't know why. I think it was like a like I think it was like uh, Title IX, like diversity shit. I don't know anything about Plaza's financial situation, but I swear to God, the man looks like he has a thirty, a seven thirty credit score. All right, um, I don't think you're that's getting, pretty good. That's pretty good, but I don't that's think it's a pussy. <laughs> I just don't think that that's <laughs> Illuminati material. That's all I'm saying. You know he's like real little, right? He's like 5'5". Five, five. Really? Algranad. What, is, what does that mean? That's his real name. Really? Yeah. You can fact check that. That's... I, know, I know a lot about Ply's lore. Really? Where is he from? Florida. Well, what? Pro <laughs> Somewhere in Florida. <laughs> so Probably. No, I was going to say somewhere in the panhandle, but I don't think he's from the panhandle. I think he's from proper Florida proper. I've never been down there, man, so I don't know shit Florida? about it. Mm -mm. Missing out on some good bayou or some good Everglade. Everglade situation? Good airboating. All right, first of all, we're getting off topic because I want to hear more about your racial theory on fucking reptile ownership. White people owning reptiles is crazy. People of color owning reptiles. Like, it's just, it's just like less crazy for some reason. Like, it, it, it's less egregious. Like, it's fine. Okay. I'm going to regret this because I feel like I'm going to have to edit this out, <laughs> but you got to give me a list. What kind of what kind of pet reptile or pet does an Asian person have? Komodo dragon. <laughs> I don't know. What about a black dude? What is what is snake? He? Snake? Maybe a lizard. Lizard. Big old lizard. Yeah. And that's like a southern thing or uh, like uh, a Afro-Caribbean thing in New York. Like some freaky voodoo shit? No, I don't think it's anything like that. I think oh. they just think that <laughs> oh. snakes and shit are sweet. I I don't think they're sweet. They're fucking weird. I don't like them. They're creepy. I don't like an animal where I can't look into its eyes and have a kind yeah. of an idea. Yeah, pets there's... that don't love you. That's what I said earlier. <laughs> it's like, animals that can't love you. Yeah, it's just like... Animals that are incapable of love. It's like, you bit me, you don't even know why. You're going just off of instinct, yeah. dude. Liter well, I mean, literally, a reptile's brain is its reptilian brain. Fair, fair, very true, very true. I guess the part, the part of your brain that like fires on when there's like a landslide coming for you is mm -hmm. the type of brain that they have all the time. Anyways, <laughs> what's uh, what else is up? What else has been going on with you? Just been goofing, just goofing. Yeah, just goofing. Have you have you completely given up on Elden Ring? Let's get an, let's hear an update. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. I I played it for like an hour and a half the other day, and I finally like killed like an enemy. You know. And then I just I just started getting it's so hard that game. Also, like I don't know the here's the other thing is like you'll kind of like I like watch a couple YouTube videos and they're telling you how to do things that are ostensibly simple things to do in the game and I cannot figure out how to fucking do them. Like there's like I feel like I need to like learn how to like code to play that fucking <laughs> game. Like I feel like I'm like learning. Like if I need to like learn like a textbook to play that game, which is like stressful. <laughs> You just go and get a CS degree so you can play fucking Elden Ring. I want to, yeah, I need, I feel like I need to get like an associates to play that game. Dog, that's so ridiculous. I'm, I'm honestly, I commend you for putting in the time and the effort because I know that it's probably very frustrating. I for mean, you. I, I haven't put that much time or effort into it. I put, I put $80 in buying the fat and the expansion thinking I was going to enjoy it and I'm kind of pissed. I'm going to charge it back. <laughs> Are you <laughs> thinking about it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I should have put it on my Amex. I know they would let me fucking. It's like win. this shit isn't. This shit isn't even. That wasn't even me. It wouldn't bro. download. That wasn't. It wasn't me. The network was fucking up. I, I yeah, no my Wi-Fi made it corrupted the file. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, I have been like thinking about getting back in the video games, but I, I haven't. I don't think I am. I think I'm. I think I'm on a long hiatus, my friend. Um, I mean, there's just like nothing that good is the other problem. I might download like Red Dead Redemption or something. That game's sweet. Yeah. That's pretty good. But like, again, it's just like, it, it's such a time suck. It is. It really is. Like I was talking about, I was like going to go and get like a little, like the Switch just because I'm going to be traveling. And then I was like, if I have free time, I should probably be sleeping or trying yeah, to get some work done on my computer. With you. Grown ass man playing the Switch on the video game. I mean, on the airplane is fucking crazy. Uh, but what else are you supposed to do? Just watch a movie, type on your laptop. Like, just like what else is there to go do? Go the fuck to sleep. Just like raw. Have you seen the, the, the TikToks? Raw, that shit is raw. so stupid, bro. Raw, I'm just raw dog in the flights looking at the. 
that's all well and good. I'm in business class lying flat on a bed sleeping. Sleeping. Eating a meal that they provided. You're a not, fully cooked meal. They don't talk your ear off more. In, uh, I feel like they talk more in business class to you. Um, They're like, it's a network thing. Like, oh, hey, what's up? You're in business class. You must be good Well, I've, I've had a couple cool conversations with like business people I sat next to. Oh, that's cool. Um, but... No, no. It's it's like you know when you get like the nicer Uber and it lets you have the conversation preferences. It's like that kind of vibe. Okay, that's fair. I also just try to knock it out. Like I don't. Also, like the type the times that I'm flying generally, like I'm not trying to eat breakfast at six forty five in the morning or like at like eleven forty five at night. I'm like, who is eating a meal right now? This is crazy. I mean, dude. Going back into economy, I got to say, it's nothing but despair back there. People are, like, very, like, on edge in economy. Yeah. The vibes are off. Yeah, I know. That's why That's why they put the mesh curtain up. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you get a glimpse. And what's fucked up is that you walk through the plane, and it's, like, first class is so nice. And then you walk by some business class, you're like, wow, that's actually pretty fucking nice, too. And then you get to the where you're supposed to sit, and you're like, oh, man, I made bad life decisions. I mean, that bitch, like. <laughs> just making so not trying to look i'd be looking at everyone in their face <laughs> well, that's that's fucking brutal that is that is so brutal it's so sad i'm like uh yeah champagne and you know people be wilding out in fucking economy cockfights and shit yeah, dude they'd be back there acting up dog. yeah yeah like, why are you acting up back here we already are struggling with what we have yeah. Why are you ruining it for everybody else? Like it makes yeah, no like, sense. Like when, especially when you get to like the very like the back quarter of the plane. Oh, dude, no way. Yeah. Absolutely not. It's sad. It's so sad. And you're like crammed up in the window seat and you're like <laughs> you're just like looking out there and you're just like the man next to you is eating a million biscoffs. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Can dude? I get yours? Yeah. Like, can I get yours? You can eat that? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, dude, here. Please leave me alone. Please, like, keep it down a little bit. <sighs> yeah, I think I booked your premium economy, though. Gas. Gas. There's something also really awful about, like, when you forget, like, your traveling accoutrements, like, your little neck pillow, or, like, let's say, like, you leave your, your AirPods aren't charged right oh. when you get there. That is, that's brutal. That's brutal. If you forget to charge your AirPods, you deserve whatever's coming to you. <sighs> it's sad, that's dude. crazy. It's sad. It's sad. Or maybe, all right, this has actually happened to me before, where you're catching a flight and there's a long delay and you're just listening to your music or whatever, and then you get on the flight and, like, your phone is dead and your AirPods are dead. So you have to pick one to charge. Like, you can't just charge them both. You only have one socket. You got to be judicious with this. It's brutal. <laughs> that's happened to you? That is like happened to me where I had like a long layover. You know they have like outlets in airports as well. Well, I didn't realize that I was drunk as shit in Tampa. I was like blackout drunk in Tampa after I got back from Mexico City. Okay. A connecting flight. It was, it was, I was so drunk. I had like 10 shots in a fucking Applebee's. <laughs> I was so drunk. I've definitely I'm like, gotten really hammered before flights. I don't really drink on the airplane or before flights anymore. Why not? What's the fucking point, you know? To like, I usually, like, have to, like, do shit when I land, so it's like... Mm, okay. I'd just be doing it just to take the edge off, because I'd be scared. Uh, I'm fine. If I, I die, I die. I, can't, I cannot rest in on an airplane. I can't sleep. I'd be knocked the fuck out. I need to, like... I need to talk to my doctor and get, like, a little baby Xanax or something next time I fly, because I just... I'm just like... I, I could just raw dog it. I could just, like, look forward and just, like... That's just boring. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. I'm like looking over at this dude, Biscoff, fucking all over his tray. I'm like, oh, I'm like, this is how I'm going out. Like, fuck. I'm just like, you that freaked out by flying? I'm not freaked out by flying, but I don't trust people that drive me. I don't trust people that are flying my fucking plane. I just don't it's trust. It's their job. I'm, what? So you think you could do a better job than that? Without a doubt. Definitely a better driver. You give me a little time in the fucking air, I'd definitely be a better pilot. Okay. You don't think so? You don't think I'm not I'm not I I don't I don't know. <laughs> you don't think you doubting me, dude? I'm not doubting you. Thank you. That's all I need is a little bit of support and a baby Xanax while I fucking fly this 747. I think it's important also to touch on the fact that a guy like me, I don't catch feelings, I catch flights. <laughs> that was good, right? All day. This is it all day. <laughs> little quips like this all day. Yeah, that was a big quip. <laughs> what else do we want to touch on? I think we wanted to talk about uh we wanted to talk about Uncor. 
as well. <laughs> Did we? I feel like we were That's talking about that. That's all my truth. Tr- you're just covering shit we put on the put on the truth. Oh, board. okay. All right. So we're, I guess we'll keep that close to the vest. We'll keep that close to the vest. What else did you want to talk what, about? What, what are you looking off like? I'm looking at the satisfaction on the wall there. What Dude, about that? It? Is, that is like the most egregious piece of art that has <laughs> ever existed. That shit, is, that shit is in the Soul Train font. <laughs> Do you want to know what's like fucked up about this and why I've kept it? First of all, an ex girlfriend gave it to me, right? Which one? Uh, I don't want to say her name. But, anyways, ex girlfriend gave this to me. I hung it up. Wasn't Ex girlfriend, was it? The ex girlfriend. What does that even? Oh, dude, why? Let's not. I'm cutting that, that out. I'm cutting that. that. I don't want to believe that. That's insane. No, it wasn't. It wasn't her. <laughs> God, you fucking fucking up my vibe now. It's a you're the one talking about your reminiscences about your I'm fucking ex girlfriend. I'm telling you about the fucking picture. I'm telling you guys about the picture. Now the picture on the back. <laughs> I think it, picture is a stretch. Whatever the the a piece of art. Whatever. On the back is some script that she wrote, and I never saw it. And it's like, it's like, I love you so much. I'm giving this to you because you give me so much satisfaction. Didn't know, right? I'm uh-huh. beating her shit down like that? Of course. Right. And then I fucking put it up in my new apartment with my new girlfriend. And she was like, did you ever, did you ever see what was on the back of this? And I was like, on the back of that? She pulls up and she was like, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? And I'm like, I had no idea that that was there. And she like crossed it out, like squ- like scuffed That's it out. That's so sick, dude. <laughs> it's all scuffed up and shit. And she was like, "I like this though." And she like put it up over our bar cart. That shit is ugly as fuck, bro. It's important to keep those type of like relics around in your life. On the wall. On the wall. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. You guys don't like it. I guess I'll take it down. It's your fucking crib, bro. All right. All right. You guys are not making me feel like it. <laughs> decorate, <laughs> decorate that shit with whatever ugly bullshit you want, dude. Well, what, what else is over here? All, I, all else I have is a picture of us. <laughs> that was taken on like an iPhone 4. I know. And printed on an inkjet printer. I mean, I got it in the mall. Yeah, dog. <laughs> it was like $10. Did, it, did they frame it too? Yeah, they did frame it. Okay. That's a good deal. Yeah, right. It was, okay. a, it was a good deal. Okay, it was a good deal. Fair. It's a it's a good it's a good photo. Oh, what kind of art do you have in your crib right now? Do you have anything up? No, no. no. You, you I plan- just moved. Are you planning on getting some art for the crib? Yeah, I'm gonna get some art in there. Yeah, yeah, some fine art. What kind of art are you into? Shit that go crazy. <laughs> Shit that proves that you're vibey. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know. It just it's got to speak to me. You know, I don't know art, but I know what I like. So the art that you have in your crib now, where did you get most of that? Because you have a bunch of fucking art in your oh, in the LA crib. Yeah, in the LA crib. I think I just kind of collected it over time. What is like your favorite thing up in there? Phil. Yeah, that is that is Phil is prime art. I'm gonna put him up on the green screen. Hell yeah. Yeah. Phil um, is art. Well, I have some like vintage like Smurf velvet paintings that are kind of sweet. That's honestly so yeah. hard. I have a lot of vintage shit that I bought at like flea markets or like you know state sales and shit. What I'm gonna bring up when I go back home is like I have a. Uh, like a crocheted Betty Boop, like a big Betty Boop. It's really fucking sick. And That's weird. hard. Yeah. It's honestly so gas. She's on a little motorcycle. Yeah, I'm gonna bring that. I'll put that up. I'll put that up next time so you guys don't yell at me. Okay. I'll take down the satisfaction. No y'all one's are, yelling at y'all you. Y'all are bro. treating me just like my fucking ex. I'm like, you know what I mean? You're bringing back a lot of like old trauma I think for so, me. I think subconsciously you're attracted to people who treat you like that is what it really comes down to. That is not true. Well, I mean, the, the, the proof is in the pudding. Jesus Christ. I don't know why this is a... Why does this got to be an emotional expose of me? Because we don't talk enough about you on this podcast. We're always talking about me. <sighs> what do you want to know, man? Why the fuck do you have that <laughs> visor on like that? <laughs> That's what I want to know. I've explained this to you over and over and over again. I'm trying to get some of that adrenocrine or whatever the fuck <laughs> you're talking about. I'm trying to live forever. I'm trying to get on my Regis Feldman shit. R.I.P. Bro. R.I.P. to the goat, bro. He was out he here. He was sweet. He was sick. Regis is a good name. What was he doing before uh, fucking the Million Dollar Show? He had the, the talk show with Kelly. Kelly and Regis in the it morning. It was Regis and uh, it was Regis and Filma or something. No, that's his name. <laughs> it was uh, Regis and Kathy Lee, bro. Uh, okay. Yeah. Damn. What a life. Damn. That was good pre 9 11 watching TV watching. Mm-mm. The world was a different place. What? It really was. <laughs> yeah, the vibes, that was a major vibe <laughs> shift. That was a major vibe shift. <laughs> I 
fucking, I can with you, man. <laughs> That's fucking vibe shit. <laughs> you didn't feel the vibe shift in that day. I felt that shit in Virginia. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I was ten, but <laughs> shit felt off. I would say. I was like, oh shit, the vibes. Oh, you know what actually <laughs> happened? Oh, this is a bummer, but. <laughs> What happened right after that? In in the DC, like the Baltimore, sniper. it was a sniper oh, right after that. that. Too. It was back to back. Like they, what did they used to tell us? They were like, when you have to go from like the one building to like the other building in the school, you see a white van zigzag. <laughs> he was I in mean, a blue uh, Crown Vic anyway. Well, that's yeah, that's what they found out at the did end. You see, speaking of nine eleven, you see Mark Wahlberg's making the movie about how it would have been different if he was there. And Mel Gibson's directing it. You saw, I sent you that, right? No, you didn't. Oh, yeah. So, like, you know how back in the day, he Mel, Marky Mark was like, I would, that shit would have gone different if I was in the plane? They're making the movie. <laughs> um, that's going to be the first movie I go see in theaters since COVID. Let's go. Let's yeah, go. 100%. Love Marky What's Mark. Wasn't he supposed to be on the plane? Like, he missed the flight? Fuck no. He just said that. He, why would he? No. Yeah, first of all, yeah, why would he be on Ma- a Marky Mark flight? been flying private. Exactly, yeah. bro. Yeah, he's been rich. In 2001, he was up. No, it was Seth MacFarlane. <laughs> the guy that made Family Guy? <laughs> yeah. Everything else he does is fucking stupid. You don't like American Dad either? Oh, no, dude. American Dad's good. All right, bro. American Dad's stupid. Cleveland Show's stupid. It wasn't good. It wasn't. Like, that's, that's fair. He also tried to tell me that the King of the Hill was better than The Simpsons, so I have nothing to say to him. Uh, I could see an argument for that. I could see the argument that because King of the Hill was good all the way through, and Simpsons starts start sucking after season ten. Yeah. yeah, it's really started to go downhill, and now it like really really sucks because oh, they're trying to. It's so bad. It's so bad. They're trying to do like a like a South it's Park. Like Future thing. still trying to make music, you know? Yeah, yeah. After he stopped drinking lean. Yeah, get Mm-mm. back on the opiates, brother. Yeah, your music was way better. Yeah, it was way better for sure. Yeah, for sure. Without yeah, a doubt. do drugs, dude. Hmm. Mm. Just a little something, just to take the edge off. Just like me getting on the plane. You know what I mean? Like, you just gotta, you Wait, gotta get in the booth. Are you pouring up for you on the plane? Uh, yeah, I'm get. Dude, usually if I'm on, if what I'm kind getting of lean on the you flight, drink? I, I mean, I'm not drinking lean, but uh, like if I'm like, if I really want to sleep, then I, I have to take like you, you, something. You strike me as somebody who drinks green. What is that, Tris? Yeah, you be drinking Tris, bro. Uh, I'm not. I a, still got Ack in the cupboard. Uh, oof. Dude, I'm not a I'm no, not an opiate poison person. That shit makes me so no, sick. No, I'm not either. I don't like downers. I drank I drank lean one time. We bought some pints from a dude uh and when I was in college and it was me and my man. I don't I think I've told you this story. And we each bought a pint or like a medicine bottle. I don't know how much that was. I drank some. Okay. And it was my man <laughs> Boris. He's like hundred pounds, 200, 120 pounds soaking wet, that made me kid. And we drank some, and I went home, and I didn't hear from him for like a day and a half. And I was like, oh. where have you been? And he was like, oh, I drank the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> what I happened to like slept for like a day and a half. That's like when I took Xanax, uh, too much Xanax that one time in college and went to sleep on a Thursday and woke up on a Saturday. <laughs> You're like, I probably oh, almost died. For sure, dog. You were just real shallow breathing. <sighs> Well, I th- here's the thing is I, I remember, I don't remember this, but I checked my phone and I think I had woken up around 7 p.m. that day and texted a bunch of girls, where you at? And falling <laughs> back asleep within a couple hours. <laughs> Not the Zan, the Zan, <laughs> where you at is crazy. Yeah. Uh, what I, was, a... I was ready to commit some crimes. <laughs> That's what one tends to do on Xanax. I mean... I just don't remember shit. If I take them, I the don't remember The problem is shit. I used to take Xanax, and I would remember shit, and I'd come home from parties with, like, stuff. Like, I would steal shit from parties. <laughs> like a little raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, why do I have a bottle of, like, Aqua de Joe? <laughs> <laughs> you ever steal anything sweet from any of the parties? Just some weed, probably. Just a little bit of grass. More than a little bit. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What time are we at? 32. I think this is that's a good amount of time. You want to go can, longer? I mean, are we, can we talk about something after me talking about stealing shit? Oh, still, like, yeah. gotta pad that out. Yeah, let's let's cleanse the palate. Let's yeah, cleanse. can we? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude! I remember, like, when I was in high school, these kids. 
that were like robbing a bunch of other people in my town, they robbed me because they took something from a party. Isn't that the kid you beat up really bad? Yeah, that is a kid that I beat up. I beat his fucking ass. If you're watching this, I'll fuck you up again. I will fuck you up again. Anyways. You think he's watching it? For sure. He, they definitely clocking my shit. You still, think so? For sure. I pulled up to a restaurant. <laughs> you have to kill somebody to go back to Baltimore, bro. <laughs> I pulled up and he was like, he was serving at a restaurant that like me and my family were at and I paid the whole tab. Yeah, I was like, hmm. You should have not tipped him. I shouldn't have, but I did. <laughs> That's what you should have not tipped him. I beat him up. Like we got into a fight in like high school, but it's because he was robbing people and he took shit from the, like a wrong, the wrong person's house. And what's weird about Baltimore is that there's like a lot of like people that live in these fucking giant houses. They're huge, but they drive uh, taxi cabs for the airport. So I was always like, as a kid, like, how is it that your dad is a taxi driver, but your house is like a million dollars? And then someone was like, dude, they're in the fucking mob. Yeah, you seen season two of The Wire? No, I haven't actually. Ah, uh, well, never watched. I actually tried to watch Wired. Never watched it. It's good, man. Why did they? Do they go into that kind well, of? Well, they go into like the like the white people with the docks, and then they're all getting their heroin from like the Russians, and they bring the shit in the cans, like the, from the port. Mm, okay, so that all tracks. So they stole something from one of these people's houses, like ten grand or something, out of like a safe, and the dude was like, "I'm not gonna call the cops, but if you don't get me my fucking money, I'm going to kill you." So they were like scrambling, like robbing every person that they knew in the town. And they robbed me. And I was like, bro, why the fuck you robbed me? We're supposed to be friends. And then like he pulled up to a party and I fucking beat the fucking bricks off him. I felt kind of bad afterwards. <laughs> How bad you beat him up? Uh, I remember he like kind of like went in to like swing on me. And I hit him so fucking hard, dude. Like right in the eye. <laughs> Instantaneously, his eye started to like bleed and shit. <laughs> and then... Like, he, afterwards, he had to go to the hospital because I knocked, like, the f the fluid came out of his eye and shit. And his friends were, like, trying to get me. And I was just, like, pull up then. Like, what's up, pussy? Like, I just, like, was I like, I'll pop your eye, too. Yeah, I was, like, I'll fuck you up, too. Like, <laughs> like whatever. Everybody in this town wants to beat y'all up. Like, I'm just one dude. I just, call I just happened to catch you at a party. Like, beat the fucking... Get the bricks off. That's why Nate moved to Richmond, though, because he was scared of these people. Ooh, no, that was that was hitting someone like that. I hate to admit it, but it was one of the most exhilarating feelings I've ever had in my life. Like literally, Knowing that you really hurt somebody. Just like, just the connection, dude. Like he fell over, he like stumbled and shit. This shit was like fucking like Mike Tyson's rumble. Like he was like, <laughs> oh, shit. I was like standing over. I was like, I could fucking kill you. And then I was like, let me stop. That was a real adult moment for me. I was like, let me stop. I was like, you're good. Don't fucking don't rob people anymore, dude. And then they like left the party, and then we just kept partying all night. It's kind of sweet. Yeah, and I hooked up with a hot chick too. Tell them, Nate. It was a shit. <laughs> I was the man. Everybody, I came back to I came back to the party, and they saw they saw me. They were like, "Oh shit!" And they saw him. They were like, "Oh my god!" And then like they just Whoa. scurried off their little rat pack. You still are the man. Hey, trying. Hey, I learned from the best. Learn from the best. Ain't that the right truth? Have you, have you ever been in a fight before? Yeah. Oh, you don't. <laughs> You're not saying that uh, like it ended very well. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pop anybody's eye open. I'll tell you that right now. What happened? Why'd you get into a fight? Um, I mean, just like dumbass kid shit, you know. Oh, so you were like a younger kid. Yeah, I was probably in like ninth grade. I just think we were probably being mean to someone who's like, you know, like came from a very fucked up household, and you know, like wasn't really trying to hear it. Were you like a bully <laughs> as a kid? Fuck yeah. <laughs> I really didn't even have to ask. Yeah, dog. I, I, didn't Look even, at me. I did not even have to ask that. Dude. Yeah. 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 Oh. I probably had it coming. Do you think so? Yeah, I know so. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> I was imagining you just like literally picking a kid apart. <laughs> Just like, just like really dismantling him at like every psychological level. Yeah, well, he yeah. just couldn't take. I can't take this shit anymore. <laughs> start beating your start ass. stabbing me in the night. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, were you like? Was it like your little clique, or like, w did you guys pick on people, or was it you were <laughs> standalone bully? I don't like where this is going. <laughs> were you All right, nasty word podcast episode four. <laughs> Subscribe on YouTube, uh, Instagram, Spotify, title, Apple Music, uh, uh, Timu, Panda Buy, everything. All right, thanks.